Welcome everyone to Discover This. Today we're going to talk about a guy who some have said was the greatest rock critic, rock journalist there ever was. A guy who some have also said coined the term punk rock. Can you guess who that is? Well, stay tuned. So Leslie Conway Bangs was born on December 13, 1948 in Escondido, California. And his father and mother and Leslie all lived in a house up there for a number of years. And then when Leslie was around 10, the house caught on fire and his father burned to death in that fire. So Leslie and his mother, Leslie started going by Les and Lester. They ended up moving to El Cajon. And they lived in a few different places for a short period of time. And then they ended up settling here at 463 First Street in El Cajon. And they would go up those red steps to their second floor. And right there on the corner, those top two windows, that was Lester's room. One, one window each corner, and that's where he spent a lot of his time. So this is where he would hang out with his friends. He would hang out and read, listen to music. He was really getting into jazz. Miles Davis, John Coltrane, that kind of thing. And as far as reading, he was getting into some of the beat authors. Allen Ginsberg, Jack Kerouac, William Burroughs especially. He really enjoyed that. Now Leslie's mother worked as a waitress and she was a devout Jehovah's Witness and she was trying to get Lester into the Jehovah's Witness but he just wasn't having any of it. And Lester went to high school just across the street from their apartment and he seemed to enjoy his time here at El Cajon Valley High School. He enjoyed his English class speech, drama, and hanging with his friends. Maybe once in a while, drinking some coating laced cough syrup. You know how it is. But this is where he graduated in June of 1966. So this is the Kingdom Hall of Jehovah's Witnesses where Lester's mother would come and worship and she would be here a lot when she wasn't working. But she would she would be here a lot and she would try and get Lester to come here. And he would fight it. Sometimes he would come, sometimes he wouldn't. Sometimes he'd just want to go hang out with his friends. Maybe go around the corner, up Main Street a little bit to the Valley Music and check out the new records and new music instruments and just hang out with his buddies. But he did show up here once in a while but it's pretty much just where his mother would come and he just didn't want to have anything to do with it. This is on Claydell in the city of El Cajon. So Lester and his mom lived here for many years. The mom more so. Lester moved out for a little while after high school. Moved in with some friends and things. Then he would eventually come back. And then a few years later, he ended up moving out permanently but a lot of time was spent here at this apartment. In the fall of 1966, Lester enrolled in Grossmont College, also in El Cajon, California. And this is where he came into his own. Journalism, creative writing, all those type of classes were right up his alley. He still hung out with his friends, listened to a lot of music, still reading and doing lots of writing, and still drinking that cough syrup every now and then and popping the occasional pill. He also bought a used car to get himself around, get him to and from school, back to his mom's place, things like that. So Lester also got a job and he summoned his inner Al Bundy and got a job at the shoe store at the mall. So Mission Valley Mall and he got a job at Stryker Shoes, which would have been just down this aisleway here. No longer here and the mall's been remodeled a few times, but this is where it was. And then down there, if you remember, used to be where the cement dinosaurs were. Kids could play on while the parents were shopping. 
at Stryker Shoes Mission Valley Mall. So Lester graduated from Grossmont College in 1968. And by then he had moved out of his mom's apartment and was living with friends or crashing at different places. He was writing concert reviews and album reviews for any local periodical that would take his reviews. And he would go to shows up at LA, up at the Whiskey A Go Go and different places, and write about up and coming bands and do reviews of the concerts and things like that. He also went up to the Monterey Pop Festival in Northern California and did a review of that concert too. In 1969, Lester became a freelance writer, and he also answered an ad in Rolling Stone magazine who were looking for reviewers. So he wrote a few reviews, and they finally accepted one that he did on the MC5 album Kick Out the Jams, and it was a very negative review. But they accepted that, and that got published, and that kind of got him started. He also wrote an article about the death of Janis Joplin for Rolling Stone. Now in 1970, he also started freelancing for Cream Magazine. In 1971, he wrote a feature article for Cream on Alice Cooper. And shortly after that, Lester moved from El Cajon to Detroit, Michigan, where Cream was based. Now not too long after Lester went to Detroit, Cream made him the editor. So kind of a big deal. So his influence was all over that magazine from the early to mid 70s. So if you can find an old copy of Cream magazine from 71 till about 1976, early 76, you're going to have Lester Bangs all over it. All his influence and his creative input. Now in 1973, while still working for Cream, he was also still freelancing for Rolling Stone. However, John Winter, who ran Rolling Stone magazine, had enough of what he called Lester's disrespecting musicians and basically fired him. He didn't care for Lester's style, apparently. But he still had Cream magazine. You see, Lester was no puff piece writer. He didn't cater to the record labels, he didn't cater to the artists. He just wrote what was on his mind and what he felt at the time. And that's kind of what made him who he was. Very gonzo in his approach. And it didn't always sit well with a lot of the, uh, the people he was writing about. And in some cases it didn't always sit well with uh, the people he was writing for either. One of Lester's things was he would incorporate literature and philosophy into his articles and reviews along with his radical and confrontational style of writing. And that's what made him Lester Bangs. During his time at Cream, Lester and some other writers started using the term punk rock to describe some of the music they were listening to and reviewing. Various garage rock type of bands and things like that. He also really got into the music of Lou Reed, and he would end up having a kind of a love-hate relationship with Lou Reed for the rest of his career. Uh, him and Lou Reed got into a big feud over some things that Lester had written. Then they would make up, and then it, then it would start again but he really enjoyed Lou Reed's music. He also enjoyed David Bowie and Blondie and a number, number of other groups. There were times where Lester would write something and, and Lou Reed would hate his guts for years, but he would come back around and they would be friendly again. And... But Lester as editor and writer for Cream not only met and hung out with people like Lou Reed, but Bruce Springsteen and Blondie and all sorts of folks. Cream was also one of the first magazines to do articles and reviews on hard rock and metal acts like Judas Priest, Kiss, Motorhead, and others like that. And the term heavy metal was reportedly coined by writers at Cream. So Lester may have had a hand in that, or he was at least editor when it came about, so who knows. But Lester Bangs left Cream magazine in 1976, and he made his way to New York. And there, as a freelance writer, he wrote articles and reviews for New Musical Express, Penthouse, The Village Voice, Playboy, and other magazines, all the while keeping his reputation for calling it like he saw it or heard it. He also found the time to record some music with various bands in New York and also in Austin, Texas. Lester Bangs died in New York on April 30th, 1982. He's only 33 years old. It was an accidental overdose, self-medicating for the flu. 
Lester Bangs was cremated and his ashes were scattered over the Pacific Ocean. Before his death, he wrote a book called Psychotic Reactions and Carburetor Dung, which you can still find today if you're so inclined. He also had written the liner notes for the band The Fugs, Greatest Hits Volume 1 album. And in 1984, he won a Grammy for those liner notes, posthumously, obviously, after his death. In 2010, Grossmont College honored one of their illustrious alumni with a plaque in the Grossmont College quad. And Grossmont College also houses a Lester Bangs archive of his writings, photographs, and that kind of thing. It was online and they were updating it uh, during the pandemic. So I'll put a link in the description and you can check it out or, or see what the status is. And if there's any questions, there was some contact info for the people working on that project. But this plaque is still in the Grossmont Quad, acknowledging one of the great rock journalists, critics, ever. So that's going to do it, ladies and gentlemen, for our story today on Lester Bangs and his time in El Cajon, California. I do appreciate you watching. If you're still interested in his story, um, in addition to his book, there was a book written about him, a biography called Let It Blurt. And there's also a documentary that was done on his time here in El Cajon called A Box Full of Rocks. And you can check both those out and, and get more on Lester Bangs that way. But I, I do appreciate you watching. I do thank you. And you know, there's a lot more coming. So we will see you next time on Discover This.